Today, I have the best settings for a new update in Season 4. And before we dive into the simple things, throughout this game coming up, I'm going to be giving you guys more insight, information, and tips on these settings. Now, that's enough talking. Watch and learn. For this first tip we're going to be talking about is something that's obvious, but at the same time, it's not obvious at all. Because for some reason, in Warzone, a lot of people like high sense. And I completely understand you want to be correct. You want to be spinning in circles. But honestly, the lower the sense, uh, usually the better. Now, the reason why a lower sense can be better is one, your centering is going to be a lot better. And in order to be very consistent in your shot and be one of the best, uh, you want good centering. So centering is basically when you're running around the map, you're constantly being centered at kind of where your enemy is going to be or where you're you know expecting them to be. And you're just ready to snap on them like that. Now, it's easier for me to center if I'm on a slower sense, right? If my sense is very fast, it's going to be hard to always have like very consistent and on point centering. And it also requires you to be more on top of it. See, I'm ready for him. And as soon as he comes in the door, all I got to do is aim in. And that's why centering is so important. And that's why you have to plan a low sense. And someone I like to give an example of is Biffle. You guys, I'm sure not a lot of you know who Biffle is. Now, Biffle is someone who plays on a slow sense like 661. And, you know, I was a ex-Call of Duty professional player. So I used to play on 661 as well. And it is just the most consistent. And whatever's going to have you, you know, look at that. I, I All I got to do is aim in. I'm centered on my guy. And then all I got to do is aim in. And that's where centering comes into play and why it's so effective. As I'm moving around the map, centered. Again, consistent shots, consistent hits. And that's why it's important to play on a low sense. So you can do stuff like this. Snapper. Now for the next thing we got to talk about, it has to do with movement speed. And this is also an important setting that you have to understand. Is one, your left minimum dead zone, you want it very low. So it basically your controller is reacting right away whenever you want to sprint or move a certain direction. Another thing is important is the right stick is also max dead zone. You want it lower. So you see some of the best players in the world like Joe uh, who has really good movement speed or just or just this Warzone pros in general who have really good movement. They're usually on these type of settings where their left stick is very responsive. And you're wondering, why do they play on these weird uh, dead zones, right? Well, it actually makes them have better movement. And you got to understand that. Something else that's very important that, you know, you may not think it is, is scale aim assist off. Now, you know, you think scale aim assist on, more aim assist, right? Well, it's kind of not true. It is, but it isn't. You will get more aim assist at longer ranges, which is, of course, nice. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, you will actually get less aim assist and more gunfights, especially close to medium. So this is a huge thing. You definitely want the setting off if you want more aim assist. This goes especially for obviously controller players, but this is actually going to make a pretty big difference. Centering on point. I didn't even have to aim in there. That's how good my centering was. Center to the hit fire. There's a lot of people here, huh? They want some of this, this set. Look, this guy moving like Joel. It don't matter how you moving, brother. No matter how you move in. Center. Too good, man. Too good. Now, for the right stick minimum dead zone, the reason you want it on about 0.05 is sort of the default is because it's going to allow you want to have not to have stick drift. You don't want stick drift on a controller. And if you have it anything higher than that, usually you will have stick drift. But that's why people don't like to put it lower than that. You can kind of test the water depending on how good and new, new your controller is. You can lower it a little bit. But usually you want it about 0.05, kind of around the default area. But you can actually get weird with a right stick. I've actually used to play on a lower max dead zone. You can actually play on a lower max dead zone. I'm talking about 0 0.9, uh, maybe even low as 0.8. And you're going to notice your, your aim is going to be even better at, at, certain, at certain times. And it's going to have like uh, no recoil, weirdly enough. Now for the next thing I'm going to be talking about so you guys have a better understanding is dynamic. This is a aim assist setting that, you know, have a dynamic unlock is going to allow you to snap like that and do things like that. That you normally, it will be a little bit more difficult on standard. Uh, basically, dynamic allows you to go from slow to very fast, and then it eventually caps. So it's very, very helpful. 
Wait, I have a guy on me. It's very helpful when you're being cracked and spinning around and snapping on people. It's going to allow you to get those crazy kills and really be more accurate in the chaos, if you understand what I'm saying. And this is something all the best players in the world, CDL players in the world, use. So dynamic is basically a must-have. This is another setting that really helps you. And trust me, if you're not using it, you're missing out. You're wondering, Apathy, how are some of these player players are allowed to really run in a room and just snap on people so easily? Uh, dynamic actually plays a role in that. And hopefully that helps you understand how good dynamic can actually be and how essential it is. And going back even to the max dead input zone, so you can lower it down to like 0.9. And it basically, you're going to notice that you're going to be able to shoot straighter, even though maybe you don't have the best aim. But you do have to be cautious with that because it can mess up your aim versus cracked players. If someone's hitting very fast movement speed, um, it can be very difficult to kill them. And that's my big game right there. That's going to be a GG's if I kill this guy. Bang. I'm not sure if I told you guys already, but J God was actually one of the people that uh, recommended that setting and uh, kind of the one that really brought, brought it to light, even though I was using it before. And I really, re I, I've noticed that my centering is a lot better when I'm on that setting. Um, and my aim, like guns that have recoil kind of had less recoil or no recoil, weirdly enough. Um, but when it became to really control someone movement, moving really fast and I had to really um, be precise at range, it definitely struggled a little bit. So use it, you know, but be careful and just understand that that is going to be a, a problem here. And something you guys got to understand for this last thing before I win this game and we dive into the settings even deeper and uh, show you guys some more is the fact that my mid there's too many map settings one it's having it square um square is actually very important because it kind of makes the mini map a little bigger look at that snap put the settings on now uh but on top of it it's actually having my mini map even closer to the center of the screen that way i can see it and follow it easier um, that way, I'm not stressing my eyes more uh, wider, but instead, I'm able to just look very, very closely to the left and easily take a glance to the head. Let's go right into the settings now. Let me go more in depth and show you really quickly. So before we get into the controller settings, let me show you really quickly what I was talking about the minimap. So for the heads up display, the HUD bounds, I have it on 25, 25. You can even do it less if you'd like um and basically this is going to put the mini map one of the most important things closer to the center of your screen and also have it on square which will, you can see in the picture will make the mini map look a little bigger and now the next thing controller which is very important you guys heard a lot what i was talking about during the video breaking a lot of stuff down give you guys more insight a little bit of tips and you know helping you guys understand things more um right here we have the left stick input dead zone i was telling you guys a pound 0.01 now, if you do end up getting a little bit stick drift, you can put it like two to three, but left stick usually dead. Uh, you won't really get much uh, stick drift on the left stick. Right zone, right stick minimum dead input dead zone. I like it on 0 0.05, kind of the default. I have messed with a little bit um, more, but the higher you go, the start, the more it starts messing up with your aim. So you don't want to go too high. And if you go too low, you might start getting some stick drift, but it feels more loose. Um, for the left stick, I got it on 0.75. You can definitely experiment with this a little bit. Like I used to play on 0.80, then I went on 0.75. Uh, I, I know people play on like 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Uh, you do got to be careful though, because it's going to feel weird eventually if you go too low. But basically, it's your your stick overall having a left stick minimum input dead zone lower and having the left stick max input dead zone lower. Your stick is basically going to react your movements. You're going to notice your movement's going to be a little bit more fluid. It's going to be a little quicker. You're going to notice like you can really tell and really feel uh, the reaction time on your movement is a little quicker, which is obviously nice. I mean, movement is one of the biggest uh, things in Warzone, and it is a skill gap. Um, for the right stick input dead zone, I do have it on 0 0.99, which is basically the default. Uh, what I was saying earlier, you can lower this down to 0 0.9, 0 0.92. Um, I wouldn't really go lower than 0 0.9 because it starts to feel a little weird. Um, but this is basically what I was talking about, telling you guys that I like I've played on 0 0.9. I, one, I noticed my centering's a little better because I feel like you can be even steadier when you're moving your stick around. And two, guns feel like you have no recoil, which is pretty insane to think about. 
but there is a con to this and that's what i was explaining in the video when you're shooting at people at a range or when people are moving too fast around your screen you're gonna notice it's gonna be kind of hard to be precise it, i don't know it feels weird it just feels weird you'll see what i mean so you got to be very careful i do recommend this setting low key to people who maybe don't have the best aim and still practicing and maybe don't have the best recoil control and then slowly you can slowly start to increase this maybe one one a day two or you know just slowly over time uh increase this to a little bit higher of them and until it feels better because i really feel like at a higher um you know anything higher than 0 0.95 to 0 0.99 that's kind of where you'll reach your max potential another thing i was talking about was sensitivity so i really recommend it played like between six to eight cents um you're gonna notice one your centering is gonna be so much better a lot of cdl pros play between six to eight cents a lot of a lot of them play on 661 i'll tell you guys biffle plays on 661 it is uh, a sense that it's very consistent your center is going to be on point your 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 gun skill and snap is going to be on point you're just going to be very very precise obviously having a faster sense is a, can be a little more fun and it can help you in certain situations but if you're actually looking for very consistent aim i always recommend it to play between six to eight and something else i recommend is making sure your ADS sense is basically a one so when you're thinking about for example 88 if you go to 88 try to play on 0 0.75 that is a one ADS uh, I mean a six ADS sense so it's equivalent to playing on six if I were to put it on 661 while I'm aimed in of course and I know you can mess with this a little bit if you want to do custom zoom um you can kind of mess with these numbers which I have in the past and you know maybe make it a one up close but maybe make it a slightly lower at range that way you're even more precise uh when you're shooting at people at uh distances but i like 0 0.86 which is basically almost a one or 0 0.87 which is slightly above a one um and then for obviously you can go down here aim response curve type i was telling you dynamic uh this is like this is kind of like a must i mean if you like standard yeah, i would really recommend dynamic aim assist standard and then this is another thing i was talking about scale aim assist with fov disable this i've ran both i ran scale aim assist with fov on because people were saying it's better in caldera this and that i ran it for like a month or two i liked it at range but close range it just felt off something felt off a little bit i switched it off again because i had it off in verdansk and it feels incredible so honestly i really recommend to have this off if you i, I think it's just better and uh two quick little things um contextual tap obviously you want this on it's like it's just basically anything you interact with very quickly apply all to armor plate behavior slide behavior tap uh automatic tactical sprint on this is these two things are going to make your movement and i mean all these four things are going to make your movement and just the way you play the game and the way you interact with the game a lot faster all right that's it for today's video if you guys really enjoyed it make sure to drop that like it helps the video out a ton if you guys want to see more of this type of content leave it down in the comments below and what specific videos are you guys looking for as always don't forget to subscribe to the channel i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll catch you in my next video Peace out.